From Achilles' armor to Aegis, these seven weapons are some of the most famous and powerful ones in all of Greek myths. These weapons not only served as war tools, but also symbolized their owner's might and skill. Achilles' armor. This is a central element in the saga of the Trojan War, is more than just battle gear. It's a symbol of his prowess, a work of divine craftsmanship, and a key element in the dramatic narrative of the war. There were two sets of armor associated with Achilles during the Trojan War. Initially, he used the armor given by his father, King Peleus, but after lending it to Patroclus, who Hector then killed, Achilles needed new armor. This is where the divine intervention comes into play. Thetis, Achilles' mother, implores Hephaestus, the god of fire and metalworking, to forge a new armor set for her son. Hephaestus responded with a masterpiece, armor that was impenetrable and a wonder to behold, shining with the brilliance of polished bronze and decorated with stars. The second set of armor, particularly the shield, was an elaborate piece described vividly in the Iliad. Hephaestus adorned the shield with many scenes, including cities at war and at peace, a vineyard, and the ocean showcasing his incredible craftsmanship and the breadth of the world Achilles was fighting for. The significance of the armor was not just in its physical protection, but also in its implication. It represented divine favor and the heroic status of Achilles. The armor was so integral to his identity that it played a pivotal role in the narrative, with major events hinging on its possession and use. In the broader scope of Greek mythology and culture, Achilles, albeit a mortal, was revered almost to the level of a deity. After his death, he was worshipped in hero cults across ancient Greece, a testament to his enduring impact on the cultural and spiritual landscape of the time. His armor, by extension, symbolizes the zenith of heroism and divine craftsmanship, embodying the pinnacle of what it meant to be a hero in ancient Greek society. Adamantine Adamantine is a really fascinating and super tough material that you find in old, exciting stories, especially from Greek mythology. People back then didn't think of it as something you used to fight, like a sword or a spear. Instead, it was more like this super special, almost magical stuff that was unbelievably strong. Imagine something so tough that you could try hitting it, scratching it, or even smashing it with the heaviest thing you can find, and it still wouldn't get a dent. That's what people thought adamantine was like. The cool thing about adamantine is that it pops up in these amazing myths from a long, long time ago. There's this famous story about a guy named Prometheus. He was a titan, sort of like a super strong giant person in these myths. Well, Prometheus got in big trouble with the other gods, and as a punishment, they chained him up with these chains made of adamantine. The idea was that these chains were so strong, not even a powerful titan like Prometheus could break them. That's one way these old stories showed just how tough adamantine was believed to be. But that's not the only story where adamantine shows up. There's also this character named Cronus. He's another big deal in Greek mythology, and he had this special tool called a sickle. It's kind of like a curved blade. Guess what? The sickle was made out of adamantine too. So, in these myths, when people wanted to show that something was the strongest of the strong, they'd say it was made of adamantine. Aegis Moving on to the Aegis, this is something really special and not just your average piece of fighting gear. The Aegis is known as this super powerful shield, but it's so much more than just something you use to block attacks. This shield is famous because it's connected to some of the top names in Greek myths. Zeus, who's like the boss of all the gods, and Athena, the goddess who's super smart and also really good in battles. The Aegis wasn't just any shield. It was like having a personal guarantee of safety from the gods themselves. Imagine having this shield and knowing that the most powerful beings in all the myths are looking out for you. But here's where it gets even more wild. The Aegis had the head of Medusa on it. Medusa is this really scary character in these stories. She had snakes instead of hair. And if anyone looked into her eyes, they'd turn into stone just like that. So if you were carrying the Aegis, not only were you well protected, but you were also super scary to anyone who was against you. It's like having a secret weapon that makes all your enemies too afraid to even come close. And there's this hero, Perseus, who actually used the Aegis in his big adventure to defeat Medusa herself. It wasn't just a shield for him, it was a symbol of power and a really important part of his story. Apollon's Bow Apollo, you see, is a standout figure in the world of Greek mythology, and he's not just hanging around being a typical god. Nope. Apollo is all about a variety of awesome things. He's the god you'd think of when you're talking about archery. That's shooting arrows with a bow. But that's not all. He's also the god of music, so you can bet he was all about those tunes and rhythms. And if that's not cool enough, Apollo was also the guy people thought of when it came to predicting the future. That's right. He was like the ultimate fortune teller of the gods. Now let's chat about Apollo's bow. 
This wasn't just some ordinary run-of-the-mill bow that you might use for target practice. Oh no, this bow was something else. It was incredibly powerful and had these amazing abilities that were a bit mind-blowing. The bow wasn't just about shooting arrows. It was about doing things that could affect people in huge ways. Apollo has this bow, right? And with it, he can do two very different kinds of things. On one side, he can use his bow to make people feel amazing, to heal them, and to bring health and vitality. It's like he could touch the strings of his bow and bring life and wellness to people. But here's where it gets interesting. The bow also had another side to it. Apollo could use it to do the exact opposite. He could bring sickness, create plagues, and make people feel the worst they've ever felt. It's a bit scary when you think about it. This bow had the power to decide if people were going to be healthy and full of life, or if they were going to be struggling with illness. Caduceus. This is another fascinating item from Greek mythology, but it's a bit different from Apollo's bow. The caduceus is a staff, and it belongs to Hermes. Hermes is known for being super quick and for being the messenger of the gods. But that's not all. He's also about peace, trade, and being really good with words. The caduceus is pretty easy to picture. Imagine a staff with two snakes winding around it, and at the top, there are wings. It's a cool image, right? This staff is a big symbol of some peaceful and positive things. It stands for making deals, being peaceful, and being able to talk well and convincingly. But here's where it gets a bit mixed up. A lot of people think the caduceus is all about medicine and doctors, but that's not really its original meaning. This mix-up happened because Hermes, the owner of the caduceus, was seen as this protector of travelers and someone who brought good luck. He was kind of a helpful, friendly figure, and over time, people started associating his staff with helping and healing, even though that wasn't its original symbolism. Cornucopia. This isn't just any old horn. It's known as the Horn of Plenty, and for a good reason. Picture a horn that's always overflowing with fruits, vegetables, and all sorts of yummy food. That's what the cornucopia is all about. It's like the ultimate symbol of never running out of good things to eat and drink. This horn is super special in ancient stories and myths, especially in Greek mythology. The story behind the cornucopia is pretty wild. There's this hero named Heracles. You might have heard of him. He's known for being super strong and going on all sorts of adventures. So Heracles gets into a wrestling match with Achilles, who's not just any guy, he's a river god. Imagine how intense that fight must have been. During their wrestling match, Heracles goes all out and actually breaks off one of Achilles' horns. Now this isn't just any horn. This horn gets some magical powers and turns into the cornucopia. What's so magical about it? Well, this horn can give you an endless supply of food and drink. Imagine never being hungry or thirsty again because you have this magical horn that keeps giving you all the food and drinks you could ever want. That's why the cornucopia is such a big deal. It's not just a symbol of having a lot. It's about having more than enough, always being full, and never running out. It's a symbol of abundance and being provided for, no matter what. Cronus's Scythe This is not your regular gardening tool. The story behind the scythe is intense and packed with meaning. First off, the scythe is made of adamantine, which, remember, is like the strongest, most unbreakable material you can think of. And who made this super tough scythe? Gaia, the Earth Goddess. She's a big deal in these myths, representing the Earth and everything in it. So Gaia crafts this incredibly strong scythe and gives it to Cronus. Now Cronus has a big task ahead of him. He's supposed to use this scythe to overthrow his father, Uranus. This is where the scythe becomes more than just a weapon. It's a symbol of huge change. The scythe represents the moment when the old ways, the old rulers, and the old order get overturned and something new comes in. It's about the big shifts that happen, the kind of changes that reshape everything. But the scythe is also a powerful reminder of something even bigger, time and fate. These are things that not even the gods can fully control. The scythe shows that time keeps moving, things keep changing, and everyone, even the most powerful beings in these myths, has to deal with that. It's a symbol that makes everyone think about how even the mightiest can't escape time and the fate that time brings with it. These weapons are not just tools of war, but are deeply embedded in the fabric of Greek mythology, representing the power, will, and authority of the gods and heroes who wielded them. Each weapon carries a story, reflecting the complexities of the gods and their relationships with each other and the mortal world.